Wow. Holy shit. I'm going to tell you guys. I am actually legit sweating. Not because of the hot weather that's here in Australia. I am sweating from war games. No, no kidding. No kidding. I really am. Holy shit. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I, I really am. I don't think my words, I don't think my words will be able to give you how I feel. Jesus. I'm shocked. I am. We get... We have Ember Moon become... We have Ember Moon becoming the new NXT Women's Champion. Which, I don't want to ray on her parade or, or, or burst anybody's bubble or anything. I found that match pretty predictable. I'm sorry. I did. I found that match predictable only because they said that they were in Houston, Texas. Of course, I didn't think of this at first. Then I remembered she was from Dallas. And that's when it clicked to me and I'm like, oh yeah, well, she's going to win now. So, I don't want to rave on anyone's parade, but, you know, the match itself was good. The match was good, but in the end, in the end, I felt like, in the end, the women's match felt very predictable. It did. It felt very predictable. It just didn't... I'm not trying to put down the women's match. I'm not trying to upset anybody. But looks like my theory was right. The only reason why they kept Ember Moon in NXT was to give her the NXT Women's Championship. And and I do not like being... I do not like it when people, you know, keep giving championship opportunities to somebody until they eventually win. In my opinion, Ember Moon should have won that title in August. She should have. She should have had that title in August when she first Ember, uh, when she first Oscar. But I'm not complaining. I'm not going to complain. We had two matches that were matches that were taped on a, on a, on a that were broadcasted. Uh, well, I'm not going to talk about these matches. We're just going to talk about NXT, the t pay per view itself. The opening match was Lars Salvan versus Cassius. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Salvan got the win. Salvan got the win in that match. Salvan, I will say, he looks like a really big dude. He's a big dude. 
even though it was a five minute match, this five minute match did look pretty good. Just give me a sec, guys. Much better. Lights. This Sylvan guy actually did look not that bad. But considering that he was undefeated, I kind of had a feeling he was going to win. So he did, did defeat Cassius Ono with a side slam, with a big, massive side slam. Alistair Black versus the Valentine Dream, Patrick Clark. Now this was actually a very good match. This was a very, very good match. I, I actually like Alistair Black. Because I've seen him the past few times when I've watched TakeOver. He's a very... He's, he's very interesting. I'll tell you that. So, Alistair Black gets the win. And in the end, he said... To the Valentine Dream, he said... Actually, I can't really remember what he said. Well, he said something. And then he said his name, Valentine Dream. And the crowd popped. Ember Moon, Karai Sane, Nikki Cross, and Peyton Royce. Fatal four way for the NXT Women's Championship. I'm not going to be too hard on the match. I'm not. I don't want to come on here and sound bitter, sound mad, just from one match. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Even though I do not like the result, I'm going to be come on. I'm going to come on here and I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair to everyone. Just one time, I'm going to be fair. This match was actually pretty good for what it was. Now I'm going to say. I'm going to say, I, I was happy about a couple of things. A, Peyton Royce was by herself. She didn't have Billy Kay out on the outside to try and aid her, which was good. Second of all, I am happy that Peyton Royce was not in this match to take the pin. That was the one thing I was happy about. She did not take the pin. Because I was thinking the only reason why she was in that match was to take the pin. I'm glad Peyton did not take the pin. And again, one of the things I didn't like was again Peyton Royce. How they booked her. They booked her like she was some kind of chicken, like she was hanging around on the outside majority of the time. And whenever the opening was, and whenever there was an opening, she'd come in and attack. I didn't technically like that, and I know I'm being pretty hard, and, and I know I'm being biased because Peyton's Australian, but I did not like the ending either. Well, the ending was okay, but. I didn't like the fact that Peyton had to take two finishes. But of course she but of course she and Nikki Cross were the only logical ones. Peyton and Nikki both took a Korea Sane elbow and then Peyton prevents N Ember Moon to try the eclipse. She goes to pick up Nikki Cross really slow like she's like she's like she's trying to lift a one five hundred pound person. And this is when I knew. This is when I knew this was going to give Nikki, this was going to give Ember Moon the time to do the eclipse. But the one thing I did like when Peyton ate both of those finishes, she immediately rolled away. She she moved away. So this made me happy. I'm happy Peyton did not take the pin. But in the end. In the end, Peyton really did deserve this opportunity. Peyton deserved to have a chance as champion. We've had far too many face champions 
And now everybody's going to start calling Ember Moon the standard bearer of the NXT Women's Division. And I've said this many times, I'm not a fan of that word. I don't like it when someone gets called the standard bearer. Because, to me, that makes, you th that makes me think that Ember Moon was the only person they wanted as champion and they've got nobody else to take the title from her. I don't like that. Will I be this shocked? Will I be this surprised when Survivor Series rolls around? I hope so. I hope so. I do not want to be disappointed. But this match... This match was okay, but in the end, it did leave me disappointed. Because I really wanted to see Peyton, you know, win this match. But in the end, I was not surprised Ember Moon won. Because it was in Houston. As soon as I found out it was in Houston, I was like, yeah, Ember's going to win now. So... I'm okay with Ember Moon winning. I can't... Well, I should say I kind of am okay with Ember Moon winning. But the reason why I'm kind of angry about this is because they had her say goodbye to the NXT Universe at TakeOver Brooklyn the third when, when she beat... when she lost to Oscar. So... She goes from saying goodbye to winning the NXT Women's Championship. So that pretty much... Pretty much throws that theory at the window and you know my theory was is that I was thinking of a theory that there could have been a theory of um and my theory was that I would have had Ember Moon be a part of the Survivor Series team and um speaking of um Survivor Series Speaking of um, Survivor Series, guys, we fell. We are. Before I get to the next two matches, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna talk about this from Survivor Series. We were all wet, wanting and waiting and hoping to find out who was going to be the fifth member of the Survivor Series team for the women. We are left disappointed. It's not Paige. It's not Nikki. It's not Nikki Bella. It's Natalia. 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 If you were going to put Natalia in the team, you should have announced it immediately. I, I was devastated when I heard, found this out. And I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. There goes my theory. There goes my video. There goes my video I just made today. Before I watched NXT, I made a video around about 10.30 in the morning and how I would book the return of Paige at Survivor Series. There goes my, there goes my, my theory now. There goes my video. My video is ruined. My video has been ruined. Because of now we've got Natalia. On the women's SmackDown team. You may as well have um, Monday Night Raw completely squash SmackDown's women's team 5 to nothing. You may as well make everybody on the Raw women's team, none of them should get eliminated. You may as well. I'm disappointed. And I'm furious. I am not happy with this. There goes my video. A video I worked so hard on. I wanted that video. I wanted that video I made 
to be the successing start of Paige. And I was hoping maybe WWE could have used their heads and they could have actually used her. But no, we're going to get the Queen of Black Hearts on the SmackDown women's team. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I really am. Everything that I worked on that video has been ruined. My video has been ruined. And I'm devastated. I'm devastated. If you want to know my if you want to know what I said in that video, go check it out. Anyway, let's get back on track. Drew McIntyre versus Andre Cia Almos. I've got one question. I got one question to ask. Why did you give Drew McIntyre the NXT Championship if you were only going to take it off him? I was shocked that Andre Sia Almos became NXT Women's Champion. NXT champion. Sorry. I am shocked he became NXT champion. I don't... What the heck? The match wasn't bad. That Zelina Vega, she's a pretty attractive woman. This match wasn't bad. She got involved twice. And in the end, Andre Cia Almos did a top rope, looked like a DDT. A top rope DDT and pinned Drew McIntyre in the middle of the ring clean. I was shocked. I was shocked. I could not believe what I just saw. And my exact words were, What the hell did I just watch? Those were my words. I can't believe it. I cannot believe what I just seen. So Andre Cia Almos is apparently NXT champion material. I didn't picture this guy NXT champion material. I didn't. I didn't picture this guy a champion worthy. I didn't. I, I only thought that this guy was only in the match just to just to put Drew over. But no, he won. He won the match. And I'm in shock. I am in legit shock. Andre C. Almos is the new NXT champion. Now, what does this mean for Drew McIntyre? Is he coming to the main roster now? Is that what this means? Is he coming? To the main roster. I, I kind of hope so actually. I kind of hope that Drew McIntyre does. He doesn't need to be in NXT. He can come onto the main roster. And have his character there. So. So I hope this does lead into Drew McIntyre. Making his way to the main roster. Now. The final match was the Undisputed Era. Versus the Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong and Sanity. I was 
really looking forward to this match. Absolutely. I was absolutely looking forward to this match. Because I wanted to see what War Games is all about. And I have seen what War Games is all about. Holy shit. Holy shit, man. What a insane match. What an insane match. It was so insane. I... I was losing my voice. I, I was. I was... I was... I was losing my voice. I was just in shock. I just could not believe on what I watched. I don't know what it is about the Undisputed Era. They're really rubbing me the wrong way. I don't know what it is. Adam Cole. He, he, he's such a... The, the way they booked him, they booked him like a chicken shit heel. He always kept doing the Adam Cole, baby! And every time he would do it, someone would get in his face, and then he'd back away. He'd back away when someone gets in his face. And there's been multiple times that he would, you know, climb the cage to try and get away. I'm not liking the Undisputed Era. I mean, sure, they, sure, they really proved me wrong in this match. They are a really good team. I'm not putting anything away from Bobby Fish, Riley, and Cole's in-ring skill. I'm not putting anything away from that. I just don't like their characters. Their characters. I mean, like, they, 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 they're like chicken shit heels. That's, that, that's what they traditionally were. I was expecting Drew McIntyre to stay NXT champion, and then you'd have, like, Adam Cole be the guy to take the belt from him. So who's going to... So, so does this really mean? So does this mean Alistair Black is going to become the next NXT champion now? Is Alistair Black really going to be the next NXT champion? So back to the match. This match was insane. I I was enjoying every single second of this match. My eyes were glued to that TV. I didn't want to. I did not want to turn away. There were so many insane spots. The match started off slow. And then once Sanity got in the ring, when all the members of Sanity got in the ring, I was getting pretty confused with this match. You know, there were three, like, there were three um, shark cages outside, and then they just, then, then the two members would go inside the, inside the shark cage. And do you want to know what the problem is? I went to get a drink when they were announcing the rules. So I got confused when Sanity came in, because... Dane and Wolf were put in the cage, and I was wondering what's going on. And then Young started walking down the ring himself, and I was wondering what's going on here. And then they explained that only one member can start in the ring, and then eventually the others will get in. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I should have just stuck around until I learned the rules. Man, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting hot. I'm, I'm getting hot in here. Whew, man, I'm getting hot in here. I should really take off my shirt once this is done. <laughs> um, and then, um, and then, and, and then this is the one thing I really didn't like. Once the when, when the undisputed era came out, they started teasing Sanity. Like they started teasing the two guys in, of Sanity that were inside those chambers, and that was the thing that was really bugging me about the about, about 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 them. Like they were poking fun at the two guys that were inside the cage. So, that's one thing I didn't like. Adam Cole started for his team. And then the Authors of Pain came out and Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong dressed up as an author of Pain. Even though he's not an official member. He dressed up like an author of Pain because he was representing them. He was on their team, so he had to. So, Roderick Strong started. Roderick Strong started uh, for the Authors of Pain. 
and as soon as Sanity got in the ring, as soon as all the teams got in the ring, when Sanity were the last team to come in, the match got real. The match got insanely good. The match was really, really good. I was in total shock of this entire match. This entire match blew me away. War Games is probably by far one of the best matches I have seen. I've seen good matches. I've seen good matches in my day, but this is by far one of the best matches I have seen. I enjoyed this match. In the end, the Undisputed Era got the win. Adam Cole pinned Eric Young with a shining wizard to a steel right across the face of Eric Young with a steel chair in hand. And he got the pinfall. And the Undisputed Era shocked the system. Is apparently what this which is like according to their song. Shock the system. So that's technically what they did. They just shocked the system. So what did I think of NXT War Games? I'm going to be honest. I actually did enjoy it. I did. I enjoyed TakeOver War Games. I really did. Even though the women's match was probably... Even though the women's match really did bug me. That they went with the predictable route. But I'm going to... I am going to assume that Karaya Sane is going to be the one to challenge Moon. Or maybe Nikki Cross, one of the two. It's not going to be Peyton or Billy. But I really did enjoy the show. I'm going to be honest. I did enjoy it. So anyway, guys, that has been my NXT TakeOver War Games review. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And, and I really do hope you enjoyed this review. I will see you guys on Monday. After uni. After I finish my after I, after I finish my day at uni. I will see you guys for Survivor Series. Catch you later, guys.